Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome back in lecture 02 part 08. Student as you see in the previous lecture that we have find out the minimum width of the beam. We have discussed this that how to fix the minimum width of the beam. And in today lecture we will see how to find out the minimum beam width and depth sorry this effective depth d minimum is very very important to find out the minimum effective depth of the beam how to fix it this is the question most of the time when we are designing any member like let's say we are designing a column we are designing a slab we are designing a beam any member we have issues regarding the initial sizes of the of those member initial sizes that what should be the width of the section and what should be the depth of the section right so if we not fixed it accurately so in the latter stages when we are checking our deflection criteria or torsion criteria or fire resistant criteria or a shear criteria these these initial sizing should not fulfill those criteria and we have to revise the design so that uh, complicate our design that is a time consuming right and uh, so to, to to prevent such kind of failure that uh, those criteria should be satisfied at the initial stage stage we should choose a, uh, the, the the initial sizing such that it will pass those criteria. So that why there are so many criteria which is used for fixing the D minimum, right? And once we find out the D minimum, it is then easy to find out the B because for an economical beam, we know that the uh, depth to beam ratio, the uh, depth to beam ratio lies from uh, 1.5 to uh, 1.5 to 2 around about it is an economical ratio so this is important i will discuss this in today's lecture uh, as i have recorded so many uh, lectures regarding the deflection criteria regarding the ductility criteria that how to find out the effect of depth d in view of the ductility criteria ductility criteria means that our depth should be such that that it will uh, that uh, it will pass the check the ductility check that is row provided should be greater than row minimum and it should be less than row max we know this right or we can say a s provided should be greater than a s minimum and should be less than a s max this is how we call a ductility criteria right we, we find out the depth from by by using this criteria and by using one of the equation which we have already derived let me write down that equation uh, we 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 assume that let's say our a is equals to rho max bd right so we 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 assume that let's say our rho provided equals to rho max and on this we we write down the equation that we have already derived that mu equals to 0 0.9 times rho max bd square into fy into 1 minus 1 divided by 1.7 or 0 0.59 rho max times fy divided by fc prime so this is the equation and from we know about mu at the initial stage uh, our rho max is fixed similarly from this equation we find out the value of bd square right and then we we assume b right let's say we assume b equals to 12 inches or 18 inches or 15 inches and then we find out the value of d so this is how we call um, the ductility criteria and fixing the depth d right from this ductility criteria it basically what what does it mean that we have the minimum value 
and we have the max value right so we can't decrease the depth from this value and we can't increase the depth from this value right so i have recorded a lecture over this topic and i will share the link of that lecture i have uh, covered one one example over this problem that how to find out the d minimum from this criteria similarly we have deflection criteria and i have already discussed that in those lecture i will share the link but in today lecture we will derive one of the most valuable equation that was this equation right you can see here d minimum equals to m u divided by 0 0.205 fc prime into b this is this is one of the most easiest equation if we find out the d minimum from this equation so we this is the limiting value of d minimum remember this is the limiting value the value which we got from this equation we can't decrease the effective depth from this value so that why this equation basically uh, make easier calculation uh, and it will also help us in uh, the initial sizing of the member so let's start uh, we sh first of all we should understand uh, we will a little bit discuss about the deflection criteria and then we will move toward that the, uh, the derivation of that equation here you can see 280 or 300 MPa which is equal to uh, 40 KSI steel, uh, 40 KSI steel in uh, US, US designation right similarly you can see this designation 420 it equals to 60 KSI so that why we are mostly used this 60 KSI steel in Pakistan and we are using most of time 40 KSI steel right so 420 and 300 or 280 is our desired value this is the minimum deflection uh, minimum uh, depth of the beams for beams and one-way slabs right and here you can see that for a solid one-way slab for 40 k size steel or 60 k size steel you can see the minimum depth of the beam that in case of simply supported let me discuss this in case of simply supported beam or slab in a slab so simply supported right in this shape so in that case the simply supported case for 40 ksi the depth will be this one while for 60 ksi the depth will be this one similarly for one in continuous if a simply supported one in continuous this is an overhang beam so in that case the minimum depths will be this much right the depth will be decreased from these values similarly for both in continuous if we have both in continuous so in that case we have this case these two cases and similarly for cantilever right if we have only cantilever beam so in that case this is l by 12 so this is for one way slab right and this is for beam so in case of beams you can see if you have grade 60 steel then it starts from l by 16 to l by 8 right but most of the time we will use l by 26 and l by 23 but for a simply supported beam we will use this l by 20 value so these are the values and uh, here you can see this extra explanation that structure lightweight concrete so lightweight concrete means that it, its density lies from for uh, 1440 to 1840 kg per cubic meter right this is round about 90 pound per cubic feet to 120 pound per cubic feet 115 or 120 right you can see here this is lightweight concrete and then you have to find out this factor and you have to multiply that factor with this value similarly if the value is not 420 like if you are not using the grade 60 steel so for all other steel we have to multiply this this these values which we which we got right here it should be multiplied by this factor right while in us customer units you can see here the 700 will be replaced by the one leg so and this factor value should not be greater than 1.09 or you can say 9% now this 
this discussion is important this this is all about deflection criteria right and uh, <clears throat> Uh, we will use these criteria while fixing the depth of our size or of our, or of our member. But before we start to derive that equation, that equation is very important. While we design, while we deriving the equation in lectures U1 part 10, I think so. We derive this equation. The equation which I have write down here, d minimum equals to under root m u divided by 0.205 into fc prime into b the derivation of this equation is based is similar we can say it is similar to the derivation of this area of steel equation and i have already discussed this in lecture 01 part 010 part 10 right i have already derived this equation so if you know about the derivation of this equation you will easily understand the derivation of this equation as well so let's start the derivation of that equation First of all, <clears throat> for a perfect and economical design, right? This is this is this equation uh, will be used for the economical depth of beam. Minimum depth of beam, minimum or economical, economical depth. Because if we increase the depth from the minimum value, so will it will causing the overloading of a structure so we have to find out the minimum depth or the economical depth of the section now let's start for a for a perfect and economical design we know this that m u must be equals to p times m n this is the sci code criteria this is sci code criteria that for a perfect design we should satisfy this criteria now we know we know this from our initial lecture that is from part 1 to part 10 part 12 that epsilon t should be greater than or equal to 0 0.005 this is for ductility reason we have discussed this in detail in our previous lecture this is for ductility and f epsilon t is greater than 0 0.005 then what does it mean? It means that p value is 0 0.9, right? The reduction factor value will be 0 0.9. And we have already derived this equation, the moment equation. I don't know in which part, but in lecture 01, we have already derived this equation 0 0.9 rho dd square, rho means steel area, area fy into 1 minus. 0.59 rho fy divided by fc prime we know this and we have derived this equation in previous parts now <clears throat> uh, as in the derivation of that steel area equation we introduce a factor that is m which is denoted by m but here let me de uh, denote that by omega so omega equals to 0 0.85 fc prime divided by fy and here r we know about r that is mu divided by bd square so we use these these coefficient or this factor to simplify our derivation now from that equation we can write down this that uh, if we if we shift this bd square to the left so by shifting that and replacing r so we can write down r bd square r we can we can replace this mu by this this factor because from this we can write mu equals to r bd square so that by replacing that m with rbd square equals to 0 0.9 rho bd square fy into 1 minus we can we can write this 0 0.59 in factor form that is 1.7 right if we divide 1 by 1 1.7 we got 0 0.59 rho fy divided by fc prime now 
we will arrange some some factor uh, r times rho b d square equals to 0 0.9 rho b d square f y into 1 minus rho divided by 1.7 uh, f c prime divided by f y we just shift that f y to the denominator so it will be and it will be right in the division form right like you can see here so after this rho b d square equals to 0 0.9 into rho bd square fy into 1 minus rho divided by 1.7 we will divide this by we will divide 0 0.85 both in top and bottom so it will be cancelled out so that why it is an extra calculation to simplify the derivation and uh, from this we were introducing the the m r omega factor so rho bd square equals to 0 0.9 uh, times rho bd square f y 1 minus rho divided by 1.7 now we know 0 0.85 fc prime divided by f y equals to omega and uh, if we divide this 1.7 by 0 0.85 we got 2 so that why let me rub this value and because uh, if we divide this 1.7 divided by 0 0.85 we got 2 so that why i'm writing here 2 and this 0 point this value this 0 0.85 fc prime into fc prime divided by f y it is equals to omega r m now from this uh, we we cancel out this value b d square with this b d square and we got here and we will take the lcm from here two omega will be shifted to this to here and this two times omega will be uh, will be multi uh, will be cross multiplied and it will be shifted to the left so that was 0 0.9 uh, rho fy into 2 omega minus rho right so and uh, yes then it will be further simplified this is r 0 0.9 and this rho will be multiplied inside the brackets so 2 rho minus rho square into f1 and uh, this is the now uh, this is further will be simplified now we know <coughs> that uh, we will ship this 0 0.9 to the left side we will ship this fy to the left side and uh, yes so that by 2 omega r divided by 0 0.9 times fy and we have to multiply this with some extra factor that is 0 0.85 fc prime divided by 0 0.85 fc prime equals to uh, this value 2 omega rho minus rho square right so this is extra work we need this right so now <clears throat> from this we can write down 2 omega rho minus rho square equals to 
2 divided by 0 0.9 right this 2 this 2 divided by 0 0.9 and uh, omega times r times 0 0.85 fc prime divided by fy bracket close and it will be 1 divided by 0 0.85 fc prime right so here we can separate this omega r and this 0 0.85 fc prime will be divided by this fy right so we separate this value and this value is written, written down here right down here right so further what we have next from this we can write down this in more simplified form this is 2 divided by 0 0.9 0 0.9 times this 0 0.85 right omega r square because we know this value this value this is equals to omega so that why here we replace we replace this factor by omega and that omega will be multiplied with this value so that by omega times omega equals to omega square this is omega square not omega r square right omega square times r divided by fc prime this fc prime this 0 0.85 is shifted uh, here right and the final form will be um, rho square minus 2 omega rho plus 2 times omega square rho divided by if you multiply these 0 0.9 with 0 0.85 and if we divide 2 by that value we not dividing by 2 not dividing 2 by this value but if we multiply the 0 0.9 with 0 0.85 we got 0 0.765 fc prime equals to 0 this is the final quadratic equation this is the final quadratic equation and now we have to solve this equation and we will find the value of the minimum from this value. So let me write down this on a new page. So <clears throat> here we have a quadratic equation and in quadratic equation we will use to solve this quadratic equation we will use the quadratic formula. In that quadratic formula we have a equals to 1 because uh, we know uh, here the coefficient of rho is 1 similarly b equals to minus 2 omega and c equals to 2 omega square rho divided by 0 0.765 fc prime right this is from this equation here is my a value and a value is 1 here is uh, because we know this is the, if we compare this with the quadratic equation so x square plus bx plus c equals to 0 so here c equals to this value b equals to minus 2 omega and a equals to 1 now uh, we will use the quadratic equation we know the quadratic equation that x is equal to minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so just plugging all these values in this equation we got for rho we got for rho um, two omega plus minus under root four omega square minus 
omega square r divided by 0 0.765 fc prime and this is divided by 2 so this will be the final form in root shape now here we have to simplify this equation this formula we have to take some value common and from this we can take this 2 omega because it can be written like in this shape 2 omega square under root so under root will be cancelled out with square so that why this will be comes out from the root similarly here from here we have add equals to 2 times 2 times 2 so this is 2 square times 2 so that why we can uh, 2 omega square will be written in the form of 2 omega square so that why here we have 2 omega square and here we have 2 omega square so that will be taken as common and uh, it will be write down in this shape 2 omega plus minus 2 omega under root here we will take on this common out so here we have 1 and here we have 2 r divided by divided by 0 0.765 fc prime right and uh, it will be divided by 2 so from this now uh, we will we will come on this 2 omega from this 2 factor and it will 2 will be cancelled with this 2 so finally we have omega 1 plus minus 1 minus 2 r 0 0.765 fc prime we have final this equation now this is the final equation and we have already derived this equation in the in the derivation of that steel era equation now here is we have one of the important question that whether we have to consider the positive root or the negative root so this is important uh, from from observation it can be easily uh, easily determined that we have to ignore the positive root why because here if we if we consider the positive root the rho value will be omega times uh, let me write down this in this will be the value which we got from this it will be more than one it will be more than one so that why here we can say 1.0 times omega this means that the value of rho will always be greater than uh, 1 and we already know that the rho value is, will always be less than 1 right this is the simple answer that why we are taking negative root why not we are taking the positive root the reason is this that if we consider the positive root this this whole figure will give me the value which will be more than one so one times omega it will always give me a value which will be more than one and that results the value of rho will be more than one so we already know that rho value will always be in fraction like 0 0.003 or 0 0.002 0 0.005 0, 0, right that the rho value will always be less than 0 we will always be less than 1 so that's why we are ignoring the positive root that's why we are ignoring ignoring the positive root and choosing the negative root right this is the final decision now if we choose the positive root a negative root sorry we have 
rho equals to omega 1 minus 1 minus 2 times r divided by 0 0.765 fc prime right and it this this equation will be will be applicable remember this equation will be applicable when epsilon t is greater than or equal to 0 0.005 because it is derived and if this is this is satisfied then the p value will be 0 0.9 this is the criteria for the derivation of this equation remember it only works that we have an under uh, reinforced section we have an under reinforced section if we have not an under reinforced section we can't use this equation this is important so <clears throat> now what we have next that f f epsilon t is greater than or equal to 0 0.005 right we can say uh, that we can also say this in another term in another form that c divided by dt or d it must be uh, it must is much it must be uh, equals to 3 by 8 we know this we have already discussed this in uh, in lecture 01 parts so <clears throat> this this can also be write down in this shape right because we know that f c over d t ratio is less than 3 by 8 or epsilon t is greater than 0 0.005 this means that p equals to 0 0.9 right we know this that fc divided by dt is greater than 0 0.6 so p value is 0 0.65 right we know this and we also know this that uh, c by dt this is c divided by dt is less than 0 0.375 or 0 0.375 means 3 by 8 so the phi value will be 0 0.9 and if c divided by d or dt is uh, less than 0 0.6 0 0.6 i think so this is 2 by 7 and it is greater than it is greater than 3 by 8 or 0 0.375 then we have to adjust the phi value that is 0 0.48 plus that is 3.3 epsilon t we know this right we know this so that why I am writing down this that uh, let's uh, here let's say epsilon t is greater than 0 0.005 r c by d equals to 3 by 8. Now from this we know that the value of a is some fractional distance of c beta 1 times c we know this right and uh, we also know that beta 1 equals to 0 0.85 f uh, 0.85 when the fc prime value is less than or equals to uh, when fc prime value is less than or equal to 4000 psi r28 r28 mpa this the beta 1 value will be 0 0.85 right so <clears throat> from c over d right from c over d equals to 3 by 8 from this we can write down c equals to 3 by 8 times d this is important right and and uh, we know this that m u which equals to phi times m phi m n equals to 0 0.9 times 0 0.85 fc prime into b a into d minus a over 2 we know this equation because this equation equals to c times lower arm lower arm is d minus 
a over 2. The C value is in the case of rectangular stress block, we know that this is reduction factor, but the C value will be 0.85 FC prime into BA. And we know this. We have derived this in our previous part that if we have rectangular stress distribution block, the C value, if this is my stress, extreme fiber stress, and B is the concrete block depth A, and B is the is the width of the beam. So this C will be 0.85 FC prime, the area of this block that is BA. Now uh, we write down that equation, right? So we know that uh, A equals to beta 1 times C. So here we will use A in terms of this beta 1 times C value. So A equals to a 3 by 8. We, we are just plugging the value of C which we, we will derive right here. C equals to 3 by 8 into D. So <clears throat> 3 by 8 into C into beta 1. Right, we just plug the value of C right here, 3 by 8 times D, sorry, 3 by 8 times D, beta 1. And if we divide 3 by 8, we know this is 0 0.375 uh, beta 1 times D, right. This is the final value of A. Now we plug this A value in that equation, here, here and here, and we will got a final equation for the movement right so let me plug this value phi mn equals to 0 0.9 times 0 0.85 fc prime into b into a value and the a value is 0 0.375 beta 1 times d into d minus a a divided by 2. So A value is 0 0.375 into D divided by A. And here we have beta 1. So this is this is 2, sorry. Now we will simplify this equation. Phi mn equals to uh, if we multiply this 0. Point, this 0 0.9 with 0.85 with this value 0.375 with beta 1 value that is 0.85 and uh, if we simplify this taking 2 as an LCM and taking uh, 0.375 beta 1 value taking common so after simplification because from this if we divide 0.375 multiply 0 0.375 with beta 1 dividing it by 2 so the final form of this equation will be 0 0.1594 times d right this this is the final shape of this equation and here we were taking d common so 1 minus 0 0.1594 and if we subtract this from 1 what we finally got 0 0.841 into t. Now this 0 0.841 will be multiplied with this beta 1 will be multiplied with this 0 0.375 will be multiplied with 0 0.85 will be multiplied with this 0 0.9 and finally finally we got 0 0.205 this fc prime times b times this d will be multiplied with this d so that why it, it it becomes d square now <clears throat> this is my remember this d is my limiting value because it is derived on the basis of epsilon t equals to 0.005 r r c by d equals to 3 by r so this is my limiting value remember this is my limiting value. Limiting value means that if 
this is my d minimum right limiting value means this is my d minimum that f my d value is less than d uh, d minimum right the value of d which we decide at the initial stage of design right if that gis let's say this is dg that is my gis value of d if it is greater than d minimum so all checks will be okay ductility check will be okay and epsilon t will be more than this right if that d gis will be less than this value remember less than this value then this criteria will not be satisfied and we have to revise the design so that's why this is my limiting value that's why i'm denoting this with d minimum so d minimum will be shifting this value by mn divided by 0 0.205 pi fc prime into b and square root this is the final equation uh, this we know that we know that p m n because for a perfect design pi m n equals to m u so that's why d minimum will be m u divided by 0 0.205 f c prime into b and this is my the final value of d we will find out the d value from this equation and remember this work both in u is customary units and both in SI units. This is the beauty of this equation because it works for both SI units and for US units. Now, the final H value, remember, this D minimum, this, remember, this is the minimum depth which will work for an under reinforced section. It will be noted that it will be noted that it will be noted that rho will be less than rho max. If we if we fix the d on this equation, then it means that our rho value will be less than rho max, right? And 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 if we find out the d minimum or the depth from this equation so in other words d effective which we have which we, we need to fix will be greater than or equal to d minimum if we at the initial stage if we fix the d effective which is greater than or equal to d minimum this value then if we if we find out the depth from this equation it will satisfy this criteria at the latter stage so we uh, we don't need to revise the design if we find out that uh, the depth from this equation right so this is the beauty of this equation that at the initial stage we find out such a value of d which will satisfy all the criteria uh, remember the final depth h because we have effective depth and then we have an overall depth the overall depth will be d minimum plus 60 millimeter this is for single layer reinforcement single layer reinforcement and the overall h will be d minimum plus 75 mm this is for this is for double layer reinforcement right the overall depth of the beam section will be determined from either we have to add 60 millimeter or either we have to add 75 millimeter or 3 inches and i think so 2.5 inches so this ends up this uh, this equation right here and we will find out that the, the D minimum value, which is most important equation. And uh, let me share you the steps that how we will design the final and how we will find out the final depth of the beam section. Here you can see deciding overall depth of beam, that is H. 
Following consideration must be given while decide the overall depth of the beam. How to find out the overall depth of the beam? We have to consider these six criteria. Six consideration. There is usually an architecture proposed maximum depth which is denoted by HA. It is better to satisfy this requirement but it is not a must. Although architect always satisfies some uh, limiting depth that is denoted by HA. So we need to satisfy this depth but it is not compulsory and mandatory to satisfy this depth. Right? Although architect don't know about these deflection criteria, these shear criteria and all these criteria. So uh, architecture depth Although we try the best to satisfy this depth, maintain the depth within the architecture defined depth. But if it not satisfying the, the our criteria, deflection criteria, shear criteria and all those criteria, so we can increase, we can communicate with our, the architect and we can increase the depth. The code minimum depth for deflection control, I have already explained those table that we have to maintain and we have to satisfy those minimum depth. For single reinforced section, the effective depth should not be lesser than D minimum defined by the above equation. And uh, this means that the total depth H must be approximate to D minimum plus 75 mm or greater. Consideration must be given to the most economic depth. Further, the most common depth for beam is L by 20, L by 12, sorry, L by 12. We will use this, right? The selective depth is rounded either to the nearest brick height or some other architecture dimension. Yes, that the depth of our beam section should be in accordance with the, uh, the, the layer of bricks, right, or other some considerations, right. We don't need to, to select such size which should not uh, inconsistent with the uh, brick layers, right. So that is also important. It is tried to keep same beam depths across floor. This is also important. At least smaller difference in heights must be avoided. Smaller depths, avoid, right? If we have, let's say, um, 20 inches depth of one beam, we have, because in the slab system, we have, we have number of beams, B1, B2, B3, B4, etc. So avoid smaller differences in depths, right? Uh, like in girder case uh, and secondary beams, we have secondary beams, primary beams, girders. So in that case, the, the depth of the girder is almost greater, right? But in secondary beams and primary beams, try to avoid smaller differences and uh, use uniform depths. For multi-story buildings, try to minimize the floor to floor height as far as possible and, no, and to maximize the headroom. Try your best to minimize the depth of the beam. That's why I am driving that economical equation for the minimum. That choose the minimum depth. Don't unless increase the depth of the beam. The selected depth must be compromised between all the seven requirements. All these seven requirements which you, which you see here, always try to, to comply with these criteria. Uh, this ends up this lecture. If you have any question regarding this topic, you can ask your question through comments. Thank you for watching. See you in next lecture.